Nonprofits have the power to transform our community. We see it every single day at the Community Foundation, and yet the organizations at the forefront of change often lack the resources they need to generate the level of impact that is truly possible. This goes beyond financial resources alone. We also need to ensure that nonprofit leaders have access to professional development, have credible research they can rely on for decisions, and have a place to come together for collaboration. Madison Community Foundation has been examining this issue for several years. In 2022, after a two year study involving 80 nonprofits, the Community Foundation and UW Extension authored a report called Toward a Stronger Nonprofit Sector, which described the need for capacity building resources among nonprofits. The outcome of this uh, study further underscored what we knew through our interaction with hundreds of nonprofits annually. It's not always about needing more money. That helps, <laughs> but sometimes it's about strengthening a skill set or having access to good information or gaining experience on a particular topic or having colleagues to brainstorm with. And last year at this event, you said the same thing. We invited guests to answer three questions last year. The first was, what word comes to mind when you think of the Community Foundation? We had something like 270 responses. 98% of the responses said one of four things, trust, philanthropy, local, and grants. We're honored and appreciate uh, the way you describe the Community Foundation and, and feel like you know us well. The second question was, what should our community's top priority be? The number one a uh, answer, without a close second, was diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're holding that more tightly as these efforts come under attack nationally. And finally, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and finally, what's MCF's role in achieving this priority? 50% of you said funding. That's probably not surprising given the way most of you are connected with us. And 40% of you described the types of programs a nonprofit center would produce. I'll say I was surprised by that. We know it internally, but we didn't really know uh, how much the community knew about that. Uh, but it shouldn't be a surprise because Wisconsin is one of four states in the country that does not have a statewide nonprofit association. So there is no place to get these uh, resources locally. Uh, there's a nonprofit center in Appleton, um, but there's, there's a dearth uh, in the Dane County area. Earlier tonight, Christine told you that we've embraced this idea as part of our strategic plan, and recently we asked some nonprofit leaders what a nonprofit center would mean to them, and here's what they said. We've talked about it for years. Why don't we have that type of resource center? Well, there really isn't sort of a go-to space for nonprofits in Madison to go to for resource sharing, for collaboration, for problem solving. Sometimes you feel like you're on your own, you're on an island, and I think that there's a great need for supporting the leaders of nonprofits in Madison. The Nonprofit Resource Center is a project that's long overdue. The idea of having one place to go where you can find the resources you need to strengthen and build the capacity, it's, it's huge. Because I think Madison is growing. So it's exciting to see that growth. But the concern is how are we going to meet that growth? goodness, a nonprofit resource center, it would strengthen our community. It would strengthen those organizations in a way that they hadn't seen before. And I think that it is time for us to do something that is broader, that connects all of the nonprofits that are in the Madison community in a way that they haven't before. One of the things that really makes me proud of this community is I think we are really embracing the community at large to have a great community means that we include everybody. It's really about lifting up the younger generation, but really like showing them the way as they grow in their ideas and their creative thinking, like how do we nourish and support that? Professional development that's affordable, available to nonprofit directors is a huge gift. 
to the nonprofit community. I'm particularly proud of the spirit that we're gaining as a community to address these issues. It'll give them more opportunities for development, education, and it'll just make them better organizations because they'll be better leaders and which in turn will make Madison a better place to live. I want to thank all the leaders in the video who took the time to uh, talk with us about the need for a nonprofit center. And that's just a small sample of the kinds of conversations our community impact team have every day with leaders uh, throughout Dane County. The need for a nonprofit center is clear and it's long overdue. As we've developed our business plan, we've talked with many highly respected institutions that also have the very best interests of Madison, uh, Dane County, and the region at heart. Frankly, in part, we were looking for someone we could fund uh, who could lead the development of a center. But in the end, over the, the past couple of years, they were looking back to the Community Foundation to do it. I want to offer our sincere thanks for the insights we gained in conversations with the Center for Community and Nonprofit Studies at UW-Madison, the Wisconsin Philanthropy Network, United Way of Dane County, UW Extension, Madison College, and the UW Center for Educational Research, among many. We've also spent a heck of a lot of time talking with nonprofit centers across the country, hearing their stories, gathering their advice, and learning about their successes and challenges. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Uh, you won't be surprised to learn that the number one challenge is fundraising. Staff hired to develop uh, programming spend time fundraising instead, and that puts them in, co in competition with the nonprofits, excuse me, that puts them in competition with the nonprofits they're trying to serve. We want to avoid that by endowing the center. All of these conversations have been extraordinarily helpful in shaping a model for Madison. Building the capacity of nonprofits connects us to our final story for the evening. Bob and Erwin Goodman understood the power of the nonprofit community to transform Madison. They started their foundation in the 1960s and since their passings in 2009 and 2010, their foundation wait for it, has given $67 million in 153 grants to 88 organizations. <laughs> that is just incredible. The Goodman Foundation has invested in many projects over the years, and what typically defines their support is their willingness to lean in listen carefully, ask good questions, and embrace important opportunities. They have a history of catalyzing projects often before those projects become obvious to the rest of us or popular. For example, the Goodman Pool, and of course, Madison College's Goodman South Campus. When the debate was about the location of a building, they listened carefully to Dr. Jack Daniels talking about outcomes uh, and then they ended the debate with a catalytic gift. MCF is proud to have funded many projects alongside the Goodman Foundation, and we're honored to share the extraordinary legacy of these two generous brothers and the foundation they created in the following video. It is hard to look around Madison and not see something that has been touched by the generosity of Bob and Irwin Goodman. Although Bob and Irwin are no longer with us, their unwavering dedication to Madison lives on. If you're going to try to find individuals who had an impact on the city over the past half century and more, on any short list would be Irwin and Bob Goodman. When Irwin first visited Madison as part of the University of Minnesota track and field team, he was drawn to the city's charm. After graduating, he moved to Madison and eventually took charge of his family's jewelry store on State Street. He was soon joined by his brother, Bob, also a skilled athlete with a passion for sports and health. When he graduated, he moved down here. He began working there, and by 1939, he was running the store. And Irwin was the back of the shop guy. He did the books, took care of business. Bob, very much in keeping with his personality, was the front of the shop guy. He would, uh, very gregarious, and uh, as I say, they got clicking pretty quickly. Together, they owned and operated Goodman Jewelers on State Street from 1939 until 1998, marking the beginning of a legacy. 
defined by generosity and devotion to their newfound community. Their mother had a large impact on them. When they were young, it would have been hard to miss how committed she was to charity. You know, it was just this idea that you're part of a community and you have a responsibility to that community. Early on, much of their giving was anonymous. One of their closest friends said they were so private, and they were private. As they grew older, they began to focus on their legacy and how their contributions could help transform the city. They decided to start the foundation in the 1960s in order to facilitate their charitable giving. They looked for gifts that had an impact on ages from newborns to seniors. Come the early 90s, I think Irwin in particular was starting to think about legacy. The amounts got larger and there was a naming component to them. Their passing in 2009 and 2010 marked an end of an era, but their legacy of giving has continued through the Irwin A. and Robert D. Goodman Foundation and their gifts have helped shape Madison for generations to come. Some of their most significant gifts included the Goodman Community Pool, the only public pool in Madison, the Goodman Community Center, the Goodman South Campus of Madison College. In addition, they provided regular support to organizations like Temple Bethel, the United Way of Dane County, and the University of Wisconsin Athletics. I think Erwin and Bob would be really proud of their gift to the Goodman Community Center. I mean, the vibrancy of the place. You walk in and there's an aura of welcoming and acceptance. I feel like we epitomize what they would want to see as of their legacy in the community. Having the name alone is, is synonymous with who we are. The love that they have for this community is, to me, living and breathing in the walls here. I think when I first came here, we wanted to look at who we weren't serving. South Madison really rose to the top. And that rose to the top because high level of poverty among African Americans and Latino populations. So initially what we were looking at, we would have to build Goodman South Campus in two phases. Then Goodman Foundation gave and gifted $10 million to us. That was huge. It was the catalyst. It was the catalyst for the change that we were looking for to do on the south side of Madison. When we opened it, we only planned on having 1,200 students. We had 2,300. And today we serve about 3,600 students. <laughs> it's made a difference in the community and look at the growth. But I think we were that catalyst, making a commitment to that area, that, that community of South Madison, that has actually spurred on other development within that community. But if it wasn't for the Goodman Foundation's initial $10 million gift, I doubt seriously we'd be where we are today with it. So the Goodman Foundation came in early on our capital campaign and made an absolutely transformational gift to the organization. Their significant infusion of support allowed us to build the community center. The community center is really the heartbeat of this community. It's about affordable housing, it's about community services, it's about art and culture. And the Goodman gift allowed us to really present those features of our mission and really have it all come together in this beautiful building. They loved the city of Madison and they wanted to make an impact and it wasn't about their name on stuff, it was about the pride they had for the community and wanting to make it a better place. Through their generosity, countless people have been given the opportunity to experience a fuller life here in Madison. They did this because they considered Madison to be their family. Well, I think about their giving and I think about it as truly transformational. They have touched every corner of this community in the most positive and most transformational way. They set a wonderful example, I think, of how to do your business, how to do your philanthropy, how to live your life. Their spirit of giving and goodwill continues to uplift this community we call home. In a small way, working with others, they made Madison a better place to live for all. I 
believe if the Goodwins were still alive and they saw their impact, they would say, Irwin's favorite quote, the best exercise for the heart is to lift a child, and that's what we've done. It's my pleasure to introduce E.G. Shramka, Executive Director of the Goodman Foundation and also a board member and fund holder of the Community Foundation. E.G. Thank you, Bob. First off, thank you to everyone here in person and remotely for what you do to make the greater Madison area a better place to live. Success has many measures, but none so powerful as a hand reaching out to another in a gesture of support and human kindness. By this measure and many others, Irwin and Bob Goodman were very successful individuals. As you just heard in the video, they owned and operated Goodman Jewelers on State Street from the late 1930s until their retirement in 2001. And they had a well-deserved reputation for being kind, honest, and generous. The Goodmans lived frugally, invested wisely, and used their wealth to make many gifts which will serve the greater Madison area for years to come. Being lifelong bachelors, they considered the residents of Madison their family. The nonprofit center, through its peer learning cohort, other professional development courses, its resource library, and opportunities for nonprofit leaders to collaborate will result in stronger leaders and more impactful nonprofits. Irwin and Bob Goodman would be grateful to be a part of such an exciting center. Therefore, on behalf of Irwin and Bob Goodman, I am honored to announce that the board of the Goodman Foundation has decided to provide a leadership grant of $5 million to create and endow a nonprofit center led by the Community <laughs> Foundation. The Goodman Foundation believes creating an endowment will ensure the success of the center so it can focus its energy on quality programs and bringing a value to nonprofits. If you are looking for a way to help ensure that our nonprofit leaders and organizations have the resources they need to succeed, I encourage you to learn more. So to all the mothers, have a happy Mother's Day this weekend. <laughs> Everyone else here, stay well. <laughs> and remember, the best exercise for the heart is to lift a child. Thank you, E.G. We want to express our most sincere gratitude to the board of the Irwin A. and Robert D. Goodman Foundation for this extraordinary vote of confidence in our local nonprofit community and the community's foundation. This is not only a lead gift, it's truly a catalytic gift. It'll rent the space. This is an endowed gift. It will rent the space, it hires the staff, and it launches the flagship program. This gift doesn't cover absolutely everything a nonprofit center could do. That'll depend on other donors, frankly. But it ends the debate and it opens the doors in 2025. We have a nonprofit center in Madison, Wisconsin, finally. <laughs> We are humbled and honored to lead the Goodman Nonprofit Center, uh, a vital new resource for our community, so thank you again.